I want to show you how you can create a personalized, contextual, multi-step co-pilot agent that follows a conversation flow and gathers the information that you need all within Microsoft Copilot Studio right now. So what I'm talking about here is I generally say to not build out a bunch of questions and conditions in your topic because naturally the more you do this, the less generative AI you are going to use. But there are absolutely scenarios where you need to structure the conversation. An example I think of is say you are building a copilot that can go and access information in a database with a custom connector. You might need to be very detailed and very specific on the sort of data inputs we might call it that you're gathering. For example, like an account number and a first name and a phone number and, and all these different things. And so there could be a scenario and there likely is where you want to have a structured conversation. And that's what we are doing in this video. We're going to show you question nodes. We're going to show you conditions. We're going to show you setting variables. So maybe a little bit of a longer tutorial here, but go ahead and sit back and relax. What we are looking at here is Microsoft Copilot Studio and here I have my coffee copilot and I'm going to go ahead and create a fresh brand new topic for us. Now if you are not familiar with what topics are, topics are basically just the different areas of your copilot or the different purposes that it has. And I have kind of a very basic order a coffee topic, but in this video we are going to create a new one. So so bear with me there. Here I am going to be on my new order a coffee topic and the trigger, the first thing, all the trigger is, is this tells Copilot when it needs to use this topic. So the trigger is not a message that it will send. All it is saying is just, hey, when the person interacting with Copilot wants this information or says this or says that, use this topic. And so something that we could use here is, this topic is used for ordering coffees for customers that come into our coffee shop. If someone wants a coffee, this topic will walk them through the process of ordering. Perfect. Simple enough. Fairly straightforward. Couple simple sentences. Let me just go ahead and I guess just save that um, just so that we're here. And again, starting on a fresh, clean topic. And so the first question while it's saving, I want to ask is, what would you like to order? And let's say that my coffee shop, we have three different options. You can order coffee, you can order espresso, and you can order tea. And those are kind of the three options. And in that scenario, we want the, the potential responses or options to be limited to just those three. We can create a multiple choice question that we ask. And so specifically, what would you like to order? You will see that the default entity, this is called, the default entity is going to be multiple choice options. In this video, we're gonna use several different ones here, but if you wanna ask a different type of question, like gather the person's name, or gather a date of something, or gather a country, or gather a city or a color, you're gonna to wanna to use those entities. But again, for this one, we're gonna to wanna to use the multiple choice option, because again, we want it to only be limited to these three options, coffee, espresso and tea. Beautiful. And so now we are going to have those options there. And so when somebody triggers this topic, they'll see the message, what would you like to order? And they will see these three options. They can either click on them or type them directly. And it's going to use kind of some smart matching to find this. Also, if you are building multi-step conversational topics, you're going to want to name your variables because every question you ask is going to create a variable and having variable one, two, three, four, five, six, it can get confusing. And so this variable, I'm just going to name it order type, right? It's, it's what we are looking to order. You'll see that it has updated that the variable and it is of type choice. Now, if I come down here, you will see add a condition. And so say, for example, the follow up question that I ask on what would you like to order is different on if you say coffee or if you say espresso or if you say tea. So for example, I kind of have my thoughts mapped out here. We could say, what sort of coffee would you like? And say our three options are a dark roast, a blonde roast, and a seasonal roast. But that question wouldn't make sense if they said they wanted espresso. And so instead of, when it's espresso, we're gonna say, 
how many shots of espresso would you like? And so we have two different questions that we're gonna wanna follow based on this order type variable or said a little bit differently based on what the response is here. So if I add a condition and I select a variable and I have order type, here if it's a multiple choice options, it's going to show the options for you. And you can add as many conditions and you can make them and or and all sorts of different stuff. You can make them and or, you can select all sorts of different variables like I just said. I don't want this though at this point in time. I'm gonna go ahead and create another condition for order type is espresso and another condition for order type is T. Now you'll notice there is, and it always does this by default in all other conditions. So if one of these is not met, it will follow this path. That's just kind of a handy little tool to have in your back pocket. But nonetheless, let's ask our next question. And that is, if they select coffee, what sort of coffee would they like? So I'm gonna go ahead and select send, ask a question, excuse me, not send a message. The send a message will just send text. It does not ask a question and thus create a variable that can store information. And so this one is gonna be, what sort of coffee would you like? And again, maybe kind of boring here at the beginning, but I am gonna use a multiple choice here and because we only have three coffee choices, like sorry, that is what is on the menu. In this variable, I'm gonna call it coffee type. I typically, I don't know if you can add spaces to your variable names, I don't. Maybe that's just like the power automate person in me doesn't like doesn't like it, um, so I, I don't add them, but nonetheless, I don't, I don't think it matters. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments down below. But here we have our next question. So if they say they want coffee, then it's gonna follow this. Let's go ahead and um, test this. Let me save it and just kind of show you what it is exactly I am talking about. The very top right-hand corner, if I open up the test pane here, let me refresh. Let me say, I'd like to order a coffee. Dang, did I really did I really have a typo in there? I sure did. But nonetheless, what would you like to order? We can see my three options here. I will be sure to update that. And as I click coffee, it's going to then take us to this next, what sort of coffee would you like, right? So here's kind of the condition. I really like how the map shows the arrows that the conversation is following. But just so you can, you know, I'm keeping you honest here. Everything is everything is going according to plan. And for <clears throat> espresso, let me ask a different question. And this question is going to be a number question. I think it's called whole number. No, I guess I take that back. Sure enough, it's right here. Number. Let me update the variable name of this here. Okay. And just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna build out T questions, but let me close this down. <clears throat> and we will see that, you know, this is now, you know, it's starting to have this multi-step, step-by-step conversation flow that it's following. I also kind of wanted to, to add if it's, if they ordered coffee, or espresso, we then wanna ask if they would like it black, if they would want any milk, or if they would want any cream. Now, we don't wanna ask that question if it's tea, we wanna ask that question only if it's espresso or coffee. And so, if I add that question node here, I could absolutely do that. But something to think about is, I would also have to add the question node here. And this would kind of be duplicates of itself, if that kind of makes sense, right? Like the this question that would be here would always be the same here because I wanna ask it in both scenarios. So instead what I can do, I can come down here and select add a condition. And now I can say if order type is equal to coffee or order type is equal to espresso, right? Then 
I want to ask my question here. And so I also wanted to show that you can break these out on conditions, but also bring them all back together as you need. And so then if I ask my question here, it's another multiple choice question. Actually, I want to make my question. How would you like your now? I can't say how would you like your coffee or how would you like your espresso here because right it could be either one of those options so instead of saying you know let's say i really want to say the word coffee or espresso i can actually use this order type variable in my message and so if i put order type like that in question mark order type again is going to either be espresso or coffee i just remembered i never updated this question all the way up here I, don't know, I guess my mind is all over the place. Order. <clears throat> and so now it's going to dynamically put whatever, you know, how would you like your coffee? How would you like your espresso in the message there? So by clicking this insert variable, you can insert variables into your message notes or into your question notes. And again, I'm going to skip this. Couldn't think of a better name. So I'm going to call this variable our order add in variable as in we're adding in these components <laughs> to the drink and say, you know, I'm not going to do it for the sake of time because this is turning into a longer video. But say if, you know, they say black or if they say with milk or they say with cream, then we want to ask, you know, maybe upsell them on some vanilla syrup or something like that. But if they say black, we can skip that question. We could basically do the exact same thing here that we need. The, the last thing I just wanted to show is we could ask a question and what do they always ask you when, uh, when you're done ordering your coffee? It's, you know, what's your name or can I get a name for the order? Something that's really cool that I just wanted to highlight is there is a person's name entity already personally created for you out of the box and you can do that. And let's go ahead and update this to order name. Okay. And now from at this point, like, Realistically, let's say I've captured everything that I have or that I need to go and create their coffee. Let's say I want to send an order summary message. This is another little bonus nugget. I guess I want to highlight for you is you can build out what are called adaptive cards. And so if you go ahead and select a send a message node and you click add, you'll see that there is adaptive card here and this is going to open up kind of the adaptive card designer. You can follow this link to go to Microsoft's adaptive card designer. It's fairly intuitive. You could also ask Copilot or chat GPT to write one for you. Um, and here you can create an adaptive card and actually add in the variables that you've captured into them and create kind of an order summary message of once I send my name, then it says, okay, boom, here's your order summary. It we're working on it right away or something something along those lines as well. You could connect it to power automate or a custom connector. So let's say that in this scenario, we needed to send our order to the kitchen or to the database. For example, we can do that by selecting, um, add in action and you will see there are some basic actions here. This is going to be where you can select your power automate flows. You can also create them directly from the screen. You also can use custom connectors. Um, it, you don't necessarily have to go through a flow. I think at release of Copilot Studio, that was the case, but that is no longer the case as this feature is now in preview and I have used it on a real world project. If you feel like I did not answer your exact question or cover something that helps for your specific scenario, be sure to follow the first link down in the description down below to get into direct contact with me. I would love to set up some time to get in a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with you so that I can learn something and help you potentially learn something as well. I honestly love learning about Microsoft Copilot Studio. I think it's super cool. I think it's super invigorating and I think it's really powerful and as we see it continue to progress. So enough yapping there. I do want to point you to this playlist here as it covers, I don't even know how many different Copilot Studio tutorials now on this channel that follow a very similar structure to this one. So be sure to check that out. And my name is Griffin Lickfeld. Thank you so much for sticking in the video. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.